We're here. We're live, boys. In AZ, everybody got here safely. We got Gonzalo, Austin, Tim, Harry, and we got Devin. Just pulled up. 2 a.m. Started triple dialing everybody. <laughs> Christian, he made it. <laughs> Let's go. Go ahead, run your mouth. Funny to me. Really, it's very simple. I call it the make no money disease. But he got every symptom. Huh? They go both ways in the color and truck. The dogs must hate each other. They like me and you famous, boy. Really don't make much difference. Huh? Literally two years ago, almost to the date. Yeah. That's when we met for the first time. But that was the only time that we ever seen each other. They, each other. they like me and you famous, boy. Really don't make much difference. Huh? I really don't pay much money. End of the day, I'm the man still. Huh? I'm finna take what's mine. No, I don't need your hand out. Huh? Just bought us some mix, my jealous. Yo Used to the stance smash. Uh, all of my bases cover. Right, hit me a grand slam. Scared it. Once I said, I can't never take it big. My head, my no crazy about the pull your breaking bed. Damn inside this rape, I drive way too much room to spare. Uh, I actually started really liking the gym a lot. When um when I started working like playing basketball, I knew I always wanted to get big. The hard thing about it was one, I didn't know anything about like tracking my, my calories and macros, so I was like trying to get big, trying to get big, trying to get big. But when I really started focusing on like what I actually was eating, I realized I wasn't eating enough. And it's honestly like the same thing with business too and scaling your insurance agency because a lot of people think they're doing enough input to be able to create the output that they want, but it's all based on feeling and it's not based on numbers. So it's the same, it's the same thing right there. It's like, you know what you're eating exactly, right? Like track your calories and stuff like that, but then it's like, you gotta be tracking your activity consistently. It's the same exact thing. A lot of people like base their growing their business based on feelings and emotions. Of course. Rather than like what the numbers actually say. Exactly. I think it's like just this, the simple skill of tracking your macros that could simply transfer into tracking your business. How many calories are I getting? How much protein am I getting? Do you even have enough calories to feed my body? Do I have enough leads to feed my business? Am I doing it consistently? Right? Because data is all that matters. Not what's well, not what's going on up here. Because what's going up in here is often both. Styles, pickups, like who's actually picking up the phone, presentations, who are you presenting prices to, um, also like the sales, your a your annual premium, but then also what you're wanting to track is like your cost per acquisition, right? A lot of people are like, dude, I'm closing a high, I'm closing a lot on these leads, but they're not profitable, right? That's what happened to me. I went $15,000 in debt because I wasn't really focused on that. Once I started really looking at what's my cost per acquisition and what's my actual like net profit at the end of the month, that's really what the, the main things that you need to be tracking. And also like what are your upfront commissions? So those are kind of the numbers that I'm tracking on a consistent day-to-day -day basis that really will help you know exactly where you want to go and also where you're at right now. I remember, I'll never forget the line, bro. It's like when we were on, when we were on the call, seeing if it was going to make sense to work together, you're like, well, dude, if I don't make this work, we're not going to get Christmas presents. Exactly. It was like two weeks wow. before exactly. Christmas. Exactly, yeah. Crazy. And the crazy thing is like, dude, you came in and what, you closed your first deal in the first week or yeah. something? Yeah. After like three weeks, I was just closing like and clockwork. Then, so. And then you closed almost 6K in a day. Yeah. Like what, two or three weeks into it? Yeah, about three weeks in. Learn a lot, take a lot from it, God. And uh, thanks for bringing us all here today. In Jesus' name, pray, man. Amen. If you get the client to pay the first premium, like the persistency is going to be a lot higher. That's yeah. the that's what the really what you need to be looking for. So like you need to like make sure that they pay that first premium. So yeah. the way that you do that is one, you have automated different texts go out. That's kind of like common. But like the send out cards is huge. Yeah. Have them, there's a, what's it called? It's handwritten or something. There's another thing that like looks like your handwriting or something, but it sends like, you pretty much type out what you want it to say. And it's like, you pretty much, it goes out to them. It's like a touch within like two to three days. So right after you close two to three days, you tell them, hey, hey, look out. I mean, it's a super little gift, but it's just so that you know that I'm protecting you and whatever, like helping you or your family. And that you, what you want is like tangible stuff in their hand that they can actually see. Cause the policy, it's kind of out of our hands when take, they're going to get it. Seven really to 14 mm -hmm. days, maybe a month to get there sometimes. Depending on yeah, the depending on the carrier, yeah. right? If you were to post date it and say it's like a an app, Great Western's really good at it, but there's other carriers that like in those times are going are going to wait till the draft date. So say today's the 17th, if the dr initial draft's on the 3rd, 
they're not gonna send the policy out till after the first draft. So then they're like, wait, do I have a policy or not? So that's why the send out card is just- I didn't even know that. that. Yeah. Dude, yeah. some do. So it's like- no, uh, I think And like, at the end of your call, dude, if you especially if you've sold them good, like bringing up things again, like, yeah, Miss Mary, like super great. I was happy I was able to protect your family. Like make sure you write this down on that same piece of paper you wrote my name down on. Like your first payment is on May 1st. Mm. Like write that down, make sure you remember it, put it on the fridge, like just remind them of it. Like instead of just going That's like, oh big, yeah, too. like when you're in banking and you're all nervous and you're like, Oh yeah, like we're gonna set this up for the third. Okay, that works. And that's the last time you talk about it. That's why they forget about it. Mm. Like that's why they forget about it. We're nervous getting routing an account number. So like we skim through that part very fast. Well like they went through it fast too. Like yeah. they don't remember. Like at the end, once you're all done and you've got them approved and everything, like just bring it up again. Have them write it down, I like send that. a text. I need to give you guys this text template. Yeah. But like you send, you send, you give a synopsis of all of it. Because what happens is if they have another call with somebody else, the sales guy might convince them they don't have day one coverage. So what the biggest thing uh -huh. I do is like, if they have day one coverage, I have them write it to top day one coverage, like that they have that. That's and so then smart. there's that. But here's the thing, here's where like, you really continue to solidify the sale is in this, like after you sell them, you set expectations that are small and they're unsaid things that like should happen, but you tell them and you just meet them. And then if you're able to set expectations meet, Expectation set, meet, set, meet. There's a lot of trust that's built and that's how you build the relationship. So what you do is like, right when they do that, here's the next steps or what's gonna happen. I'm at, just be, make sure to check your mail. I'm gonna send out you a little thing. It's super, super small. It's just a token of appreciation. Thanking you for like, who I, it's also like shows my face. So you, you'll know that it's me. Cause there's like a huge face. It's gonna say Johnny from me. Um, so that's what you're gonna get in the next two to three days. Be on the lookout for that. From there, text me when you get that. Then after that, seven to 10 days typically after this, you're gonna get the policy. Once you get the policy, either call me or text me. I just need to know on my end that you got it and that I can kind of like make sure that everything's good on my side. So is that fair? Is that fair? Yes, okay, great. So then you're setting expectations consistently, set meet, set meet, set meet. So like you should have a lot of that stuff automated out. Yeah. Um, like what I did is at first I was like doing it manually. The next day I would send out the send out cards. But then what I did is I created a process to where like I had Stephanie start doing it. Dude, I feel like the average person is like, oh, I'm not gonna die within the next, during my mortgage. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest ones were like the people who are 78 and they're like, they're, they're 78 and it's like, how long is your mortgage? 30 years. Yeah, I'm not dying in the, 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 that time. Yeah. It's like, okay, gotcha. So you're, you're living like, to okay, 108. You're like, listen, <laughs> you measure like where the finish line is and where the start was, it's like, <laughs> I think like what's interesting is you have a unique experience like you have a unique perspective because you go in person Dude, I've mm -hmm. seen people cry in person hug me pray with me them. You know be like oh my gosh I never would have known my policy was gonna lapse because of this loan or whatever you're in person It's like I've never gone into a final expense home. Yeah, that's what's interesting But I feel like sometimes you could lose touch with who you're actually speaking with and you like you sell over the phone yeah. and also in person. I'll always be like, yeah, so Miss Johnson, just to give you an idea, I've helped hundreds of families. And sometimes when I make a friend, I'd like to take a picture just so I always remember a face to a name. So these are some of the people I've been able to help over the past couple months. And then I'm Wait, like, would, get, would, you mind, would you mind taking a picture with me? <laughs> You know, so I, I show them this and this this is only like maybe a third of my book of business, you know So there was one time this lady was not gonna buy and then she saw her cousin on here oh. And then she ended up buying it was a hundred That's why everybody's here at the Airbnb, but we, uh, in 30 minutes, we're actually headed to a mastermind. It's all the boys, dude. You gotta come to the next in-person event, dude. We're super excited to have you part of it. Really the next step to what we're gonna do is I'm gonna send you an onboarding text to Austin. up and showing out at the mastermind this agent right here is able to consistently produce a thousand dollars a day 
rinse and repeat cold door knocking we're gonna actually dive deeper into what he says how he says it, how he actually gets in the home how he's able to turn a cold prospect into a person who's actually paying him a thousand dollars a day in straight commission so gonzalo dude how do you even get into selling insurance dude Oh man, I, I honestly started with telesales. So I personally think it was extremely difficult for me to get the ball rolling, but about three months into the insurance industry, I started door knocking and I personally got a lot more experience doing it. So I learned how to close in person and that's kind of how I got to where I'm at today, right? Yeah, man. Was it scary at first? Like your first cold door knock? Yeah, like, definitely. Oh. I mean, it's all about getting uncomfortable, right? So the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to be doing it. I feel like a lot of agents, when they first start, they have zero capital, no money to start with. Yeah. And they think they need to have, you know, a couple thousand in the bank to actually get the ball rolling. And and that's what I've been trying to like steer people away from because at the end of the day, you really don't need anything to print money when you have your life insurance license. Door to door, it's different than telesales. You have to have a little bit of finesse, right? Yeah. You can't just go up to them be like, hey, I'm selling life insurance, let me in your house. With not having like specific leads for it, I try to target people that are over 60, you know, nicer, you know, decorated homes where I can tell there's a nice Miss Johnson there, you know, her husband, nice family, you know, loving people, right? How'd you um, get over that fear of rejection at first? Because like, that's scary at times. Like yeah, people just like, yeah, it, it's scary right away. Cause if you're not in sales or you're just getting started in selling life insurance, you're probably not used to getting rejection. But the reality is the more that you get rejection, the more yeses you get. There's a, there's a book, Go For No, which I read right when I started in the insurance industry. That was a really good one because the, the more no's you get, the closer to the yes that you get. But how did you personally overcome that fear of rejection when you're going out in cold door knock. Fail faster. You have to fail faster. Don't be afraid of failing because when you fail, you feel that failure, you feel that rejection, and you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. You do it as fast as possible, you're gonna get that success. You're gonna get that one yes that you need. And realistically, like if you knock 40 doors in a day, you're probably gonna get two sales. And two sales translates to about a thousand bucks minimum. Right. So in you, actual commissions. Yeah, in actual like, commissions. Not just AP, yeah. just like commissions. Yep. Exactly. So that's something I've, I've taken into consideration when you don't have money to spend on leads you have to trade your comfort for you know the money right you have to get uncomfortable you got to do everything that you possibly can where first ever community event live in person here in phoenix arizona it's crazy it's wild it's super knowledgeable giving information to the people who actually need it most insurance agents from all across different states right six seven eight different states came out new mexico is representing utah missouri texas i don't even know if i said new mexico arizona uh florida people come in came in from all over the country just to be able to get the information that they need to be able to grow and scale their life insurance business. We've broken down already people's businesses, literally figuring out the problem that they're facing right now and solving those so that they can help get to the next level. It's really cool because I remember sitting and I was dreaming and thinking about what I wanted the community to be and what I wanted it to look like at the beginning of this year of 2024. And I remember sitting down and thinking like, dude, imagine being able to get a group of agents, a community of agents that were inspired, like-minded to be able to come to one place, whether it's from Arizona, Texas, wherever it was in the country, all come to one place to be able to mastermind network and actually solve problems together so that they can get to the next level. It's been about two years since I got started in the, the space. And I remember thinking like, it would be so cool if I could get around other agents trying to solve the same problems I am, but I couldn't find it. I was looking around, joining Facebook groups. I was joining these different communities that were free, which was awesome, but I was never able to find the in-person people, like the, the people in person, like live face to face to be able to help like scale to that next level. And so I remember paying and investing into an event where I was able to speak to top people in the industry. And I remember that transformed my business. And I took one little nugget from that and I'll never forget it. I was three months into the business. And I remember taking this one nugget that like, I've got my numbers broken down by an expert. I mean, dude's doing multi nine figures a year. And he's like, dude, your numbers are looking great. Imagine if you doubled your leads 
you double your business. What would that do for you? And I, right then I was doing about 20, 30,000 a month. And I remember the next few months after that, I ended up doing like 40 to 60,000 a month consistently every single time after that. And it, it, they brought a new sense of conviction to do what I was wanting to do. It was, it solidified my belief that this can be done, that I'm very close to actually getting to where I want to go. All I needed was that belief instilled into me. And so that's what we've done here live. It's crazy. Two years later, it's actually going on right now. Two years later, I'm actually doing that for other agents. And it's really cool seeing these people going and they're like, Hey dude, I'm stuck at 10,000 a month. What's my problem? We're solving their bottlenecks. So after they leave here, we can actually go and spread a movement. This is a movement that's spreading rapidly. And this is just the start. I'm super excited because we're going to be doing events live more and more where we're live dialing, where we're figuring out what's working in the industry, what's not. It's really called a mastermind because you're putting all minds together to solve problems and you're able to do it way faster. So if you're wanting to join the community, I personally want to invite you. We're doing live dials on Zoom every day. We got seven live calls every single week where we're teaching you role playing. We're literally sitting down side by side with you, breaking down your business, figuring out what's working, what's not. It's personalized and custom coaching weekly so you can get to your goals way faster than trying it by yourself. To book a call with me down below. Let's see if you're a fit to join this exceptional and exciting community that's continuously growing every single day. to go to top golf just enjoying the night spending time with each other and i guess that's it right yeah i can carry all that you've got to every heart is not a lie i will put out a fire <laughs> I wrote problems here. Like what are some good, what are some things that you guys are facing in your business right now that we can solve like now and we can all kind of work through and help you guys with and kind of like mastermind. Like that's what a mastermind's for is everybody coming together, all of our minds coming together, everything that we know, all of our experience coming together to solve one problem. And that's how you're able to move rapidly fast. What's your closing ratio right now? As far as from when you present to somebody to when you close. I think the last time I checked the track it was like 30%. That could get better. And is the biggest objection that you're getting is banking? Yeah. Like I can get like social, like easy, smooth. Like when I just get to bank and everything just like crumbles. So what do they say usually? Like I'm not too comfortable. So like that's the main thing that pisses me off. Like how are you not comfortable giving your bank but social is all silly willy. Like come on now. Can we hear what you say? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so when you're going into, when you're going into banking. Okay, Johnny, so the last thing the uh, life insurance company needs to verify is they have to make sure that you do have funds available and that you're not trying to commit any insurance fraud and take any uh, insurance out in anyone else's name. So what's the name of the bank you bank with again? Ooh, where did you get that? Yeah, fraud? Yeah. Don't you're saying that. like a lot of trigger words. Hold, hold. What that, in my opinion, was garbage. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you said the word fraud. What else? Checking funds. Checking funds. Like, why would you even say the word fraud? It's just okay. very, very simple. We'll be sending this up to our bank service plan. Who do you bank with? Okay. I don't really explain why I'm getting banking unless I get an objection. Or they ask me what it's for. Yeah, no transaction of money today. But what they are going to do is make sure this is an account that receives government benefits. I'll get a green check mark or red X mark there. But that way, we also don't ever have to set up banking again. We just make the necessary change if one is necessary. The, the mistake a lot of people make, and I made this a lot, this is why I can speak on this, is I listen to too many voices. You guys have to narrow down who you listen to, whether it's YouTube stuff, whether it's like whatever it is, well, even people inside the community, right? Narrow down who you listen to and say everything they, whatever they say, I'm going to do 
until I get to their spot. Yeah. I definitely think like riches are in the niches too. So it's like just how you're talking about with like people you watch on YouTube, whatever, like people who come into this business and like, it's funny because I talk to a ton of agents and the ones that always go like, I'm like, what do you specialize in? They go like, oh, I do final expense, term, mortgage protection. I, I dabble in IULs. I wrote a few annuities. Those are always the brokest people every time, yeah. every single time. They think they're going to be an expert on everything. They have to learn every angle of the business. Like the ones that are just like, hey, I do mortgage protection or I do final expense or I just do IULs. Those are the ones that make the most money. And it's the same thing with scripting. Like top producers, all everybody who is decent in the business, they're not changing up their script. It's the same thing every time. It's just repetitive and consistency. When I, I'm new, I, when I first started, I went all over the place with banking and I was getting crapped on. And honestly, where the heck is Max? Max chewed me out a little bit. He's like, this is a script, do the script. And it's magic. Whatever the, we're going to set you up on Mutual of Omaha's bank service plan here. What bank do you typically use? Mm -hmm. Like, that word track is beautiful. Oh, wow. It seems like all my clients here in Texas are, are using them. It actually auto-populates a routing number as one, two, three, four, five. Um, can you just double check that for me? Boom. Like, since I've been doing that, I know why he's getting 80% close rate. And yeah, that's like the main thing. And I've been practicing. Yeah, but, you know, it sounds very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to hit that pitch. Banking is so beautiful to ask. So I think um, the challenge is, is that anytime you change something, especially in a script and especially in like a high stress part of the script, it's like, oh God, the banking's coming up. Like it's scary, right? But it's only scary if you don't have confidence saying it. And how do you get confidence saying it, Mr. Devin, is by saying it over and over and over again and having success with it. So if, if Mr. Harry here is relatively new and he's actually, you know, really starting to gain momentum, there's no reason why you can't. But I'm just gonna highly recommend that you don't keep changing things, my man. Like it's just, you're just, you're really shooting yourself in the foot there. What's good is that we're all saying it and we're all seeing consistent results. If I was the only one saying it, everyone else was saying it and they weren't getting results, then I was like, okay, maybe this isn't universal, but I think, you know, we're all say, we're, we're all somewhat saying the same thing except for this guy. Um, <laughs> so try, try to go back to that, Devin, and you'll, you'll be fine. And you got it. And one thing I, I wanna like really like lift you up on, dude, is like you, you're doing the work and doing the activity. Mm -hmm. And like, just stay consistent with that, bro. Because right now you, you have the, the waterfall effect, bro. Keep doing that and don't ease off the brakes right now. Like step on the gas. Like when we leave here, bro, like step on the gas and really continue that on and do that consistently. And don't just do it one day and let your feelings play into it. Like, no, go out and set a daily routine, daily inputs, daily commitments that are non-negotiables for you every day. 8 a.m., I'm on the phones, Monday through Friday, Saturdays if you need to. Like, whatever you gotta do to do it, go ahead and do that. Um, just for feedback for me, be able to help to make this community better um, because I really, truly wanna make this the best life insurance telesales community, um, in-person events, stuff like that. So how has your guys' experience been here? Like, are you guys, what do you guys like and what do you guys feel like could have been better about this like event. The amount of like brains we got to pick here, you know, um, you to start. I mean, Johnny as well, Max, Austin. I mean, and, and everyone else who's in the same kind of position that you know I am, or a little bit better. You know, we're all kind of in it together. We all got to talk about our struggles and kind of figure out a way through that together. So the only critique I have, and it's not even really a critique, but I wish I could have dialed in front of you guys and you guys kind of picked my presentation apart yeah. in front of me. But that, but there was there just wasn't enough time this time around, but when we all go to Croatia, that'll be it, <laughs> right? Yeah. right then. No, I think that's good, like having an extra day of just straight dials, either be the start of the event or middle of the event or at half a day, something like that. I think that'd be really good. I wanna say, I, I really appreciate the, the mix that we had of professional and fun. I think we had a really happy medium. I think we all had a really good time, but we also, we did do a lot of one personal work and two professional work. What I would love to see more of is special guests. Like this guy with the personal brand, beautiful touch at the end for us. Like it gave us a ton of value. I thank God every day like to be able to like do it, do what I do. Um, and I just wanna do it more. I'm excited for our next event, obviously, um, as we continue like our relationships on Zoom. I'm kinda sad seeing it like everybody kind of leaving out today, but it'll be good. I'm excited. I think it'll bring a new fire to like yep. the community 
And I think like people who didn't come, being able to like inspire them too, that they can still do it, that they could like, they weren't here, they weren't able to like be around the fire. But I think they, there's going to be people who didn't come. They're like, dude, like I feel inspired just because like wh whatever happened at that event, dude, like it's crazy. I'll be your light.